Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. Now then, it is a little bit noisy in here. Fun fact, I've actually been sat on my sofa for the last, I don't know, hour. Don't know if you can hear that. There is a shit ton, and I mean a shit ton of work going on outside. I've waited as long as I could to film this. I don't know if you can see how dark it actually is getting in here, but it's about time we started because I think it's about 2 p.m., but it's like... Yeah, it's quarter two, but it's like getting real dark. So we're just going to get started. So if there's any noise, I'm sorry. There's jack shit I can do about it. So on Instagram, I believe it might have been last week. I asked you guys, you know, what kind of videos you want to see from me over winter. Now at the moment, as you may or may not know, I'm very busy boxing orders. But I did take some requests from you guys on Instagram. And one of the requests that came in was for a top 10 philodendron video. Now, a while ago, I did do a top anthurium video. And I guess I just never got round to doing the philodendron one. So can you hear that? I guess everyone else moving into all the units is picking now to do it. So anyway, I have 10 philodendron here to show you. Now, I'm going to say this very quickly. I've said this before, but I can't be the only person out there that has a favorite plant, but that kind of changes over time, right? You don't always have the same favorites because you discover new things. And that is awesome. That is an awesome, awesome thing. So for example, I don't have a Florida ghost here in this list today of my top philodendron. It is one of my top philodendron, but I didn't think you guys needed to see it for the millionth time. So I've tried to pick different philodendrons that I happen to love and they are in my favorites. They're just maybe not as obvious as AJ Florida Ghost. Even though, to be honest, I don't think there's a single plant in here that may surprise anybody, but we'll see. So the first plant that is definitely among one of my top favorite philodendron is this one. This is Philodendron Melanochrysum and it is a baby, but I want to very quickly say I'm keeping all the plants today in these plastic bags that I ship out with just to stop the water from going everywhere because last time I did this, I got absolutely soaked to death. So I'm keeping it in one of these little baggies. So if it goes down my mic, I'm very sorry. Most of you probably know what Philodendron Melanochrysum looks like by now. It starts out like this and I do not have one here to show you because they're all on my living wall. But when they get really, really big, they turn into these big, long... I don't know how to describe them. They kind of look like shields in a way. They're really, really beautiful plants. I will insert a picture of a mature one here, just so you can see, in case you haven't seen one of these before. But these are fantastic. They're quite hardy, in my opinion. And I tell you what, I think nearly every plant here today is actually quite hardy. What do I mean by hardy? I just mean it's quite easy to take care of. It's quite tolerant of many things. So... They're quite easy to take care of, in my opinion and in my experience. They don't propagate amazingly, <laughs> I'll say that, but they're really, really pretty plants. They're velvety, they're dark, they're pretty luscious. They come through with a really pretty bronze kind of leaf in the same way that a lot of anthurium do. And then they harden off to this dark, I guess you could say it's really dark green. It's not black, but it, in a lot of lights, it, it will look black. And certainly when it gets mature, it can look super, super black. So just a really, really nice plant. As I say, I don't have the big one with me. It's on my wall. I can't exactly pull it off the wall, but there it is. I'm going to put it right there because hopefully it won't fall off. This is really loud, by the way. I don't know if you guys can hear, you know, what's coming down through the microphone or not, but just let me tell you, it's really loud. I don't think they're going to stop. Let's keep going. So the next plant I have is a hybrid and it's one of my favorite plants because it ships well it grows well, it's super tolerant of being underwatered, it's super humidity tolerant, it's not too difficult to get like big plump sexy leaves out of it. I mean this one admittedly doesn't but it's just juvenile and it's kind of growing up but it is definitely one of my favorite plants because just it just gives me no trouble and that is Philodendron Melanochrysum crossed with Philodendron Varicosum. Really pretty plant. Again, don't know how much of this you can see. Oh, you can see plenty. I've got it sat on my table right now. As I say, this one is growing. It is only a baby, so its leaves aren't huge, but they do turn into big, you know, heart-shaped leaves. They're a little bit more pointy than, say, a Gloriosum, for example. That's more round, but it's just a really nice plant. So they have kind of pink backs, kind of. It's very, very subtle. Don't know if you'll be able to see that there. Kind of pink backs, not, not tons, because obviously it is a hybrid with melanochrysum. 
but it's a really really pretty plant as i say it's just super hardy it can dry out it'll recover and not every philodendron can do that a lot of them will just look terrible for a long period of time these ones don't these ones could really take a punch and i'd be curious to know if anybody else has these plants and they agree with me because they're so easy to look after they really are before this one got watered recently it had skipped a few waterings let me tell you it was pretty dry and it just looks fine there's no damage it just looks beautiful i think we need to grow it up something because it's kind of getting to the point now where it's a little bit you know a little bit all over the place or maybe i'll propagate it down i don't know since it is coming to winter i should probably start on my propagations for spring but this is a really really beautiful plant and if you get the chance to pick one up i do suggest you do because they are reasonably easy to look after they won't give you many issues at all do not be fooled by how they look they're really really good and then they're the only small ones that i've got they're going to start getting a little bit bigger now i have one other small ish one that i will grab so I'll pull that down a little bit the next plant that i have to show you is absolutely a favorite of mine i'm obsessed with these i always have been these are not for everybody let me just say that they are not for everybody so this is philodendron serpents and i will show you close up what they look like because they're awesome but you might notice that that's one hell of a hairy petiole right there it's really soft and furry it's amazing leaves are sorry this is a little bit of transit damage on this one the leaves are pretty boring looking i would honestly kind of say the parties in the stem here so if you're looking to buy one of these you're probably doing so because of the stem um for me the leaves aren't much i mean the back of them are pretty cool i've got to say that the back have really nice veining but generally speaking they're pretty chill other than the fuzzy stems i love them i think they're absolutely amazing i had one a while ago and i think i sold it in the shop i was kind of switching them out at home um, if you remember last year you'll know i had one i had it for a long time i picked a really big one and i think that was my problem because then i got really full up on space and then i had to declutter my plans and it had to go because it was one of the bigger ones but i have a couple of small ones in the shop um, they're totally not for sale they're going to be uh, propagated out but i'm 100 keeping one for moi probably up here i do have one on the wall and i have maybe about three more downstairs so i might keep this one up here and grow it up here because i have such great light up here and i haven't bothered kind of sorting out any plants yet like i still have the same hoyer on the back shelf so we'll see what happens with that but this is honestly this is underrated in my opinion but at the same time i appreciate that not everyone's gonna love the stems it's not for everybody it's just not i don't know if you can get a really good look at the stem maybe it depends it depends if that's blowing out beautiful plant though it is a beautiful plant it's just it really depends on whether you're okay with all that fur it's not the only furry stemmed plant that there is i think there's philodendron uh is it squam squamiferum squamiferum uh squamacole as well i think fibrosum is quite hairy but this has always been my favorite because i think i could be wrong but i think it's the hairiest of all of them i might be wrong if i am wrong let me know in the comments but i'm pretty sure that serpents is the hairiest plant of all of those i don't know let me know i'm really curious because if there's a hairier one i might have to have it uh let's put him there what else have we got oh they're getting bigger oh no so this next plant hasn't always been a favorite of mine it's more come into play this year and that's probably because i got quite a few in and they were looking real fine uh, i have a really nice one here so maybe when i show you it you'll see why it's kind of cheating because it's so similar to a ghost i guess but what the hell this here is one of my favorites at the minute and this is philodendron florida beauty and can i just show you this because in the gold look at that oh that's really bright <laughs> really bright which i'm surprised by considering it's not the brightest in this shop right now but the variegation's coming through really bright there's another leaf here don't know if it's going to focus on that you should be able to see all the variegations coming in there it's very floppy because it's very new but to be honest all the leaves bar the first one are doing pretty good that is just brilliant look at that so if you don't know anything about the florida beauty it's similar to the florida ghost it's kind of got the same leaf shape just this is the variegation that you see it's yellow variegation and if you want to keep it then you need to work at it um what i mean by that is if it starts reverting then you maybe need to go snip snip and propagate it and try and preserve the variegation that way in the same way that you would a variegated monster so if that doesn't bother you cool um they're really really good plants i don't find them super easy i don't like i cannot propagate these to save my life i'm trying i'm really trying 
but they are hard to propagate. They love to rot all the time and they don't like to root. It doesn't really matter what I do. I can't really get them to root very well at all. It's difficult, but that doesn't stop them being absolutely amazing. I mean, here, if I cut this one, actually saying that now, I put my, that in front of my hand. You can see this uh, root here and then there's some here as well. If I cut that, then yeah, I could probably propagate from that. I probably, I wouldn't doubt that, but I don't really want to cut it. It's really pretty, really, really pretty. I'm just going to move this guy because I think he's going to topple over if I don't. So let's just put him down there. Right, what else? They're getting a bit big now, not going to lie. So let's grab another one. Let me grab this plant because it's an absolute classic. Honestly, it's a classic. It's not going to stop being a favorite of mine. This one has been propagated. I'm just noticing now it's got a little bit where it's been chopped off right here. So if you're noticing that, that's why. This is a philodendron, El Choco Red, and it's just, honestly, I keep calling it an all-rounder. And I mentioned this in my, uh, my like updated easy houseplants video, because it really is a great plant. It's great. It has amazing red backs, which I don't know if it's going to come off. There you go. Kind of like a very cool somewhat. It's got these amazing red backs. It's velvet up on the front. It's got really nice veining on the front as well, so it gives you something to look at. It's quite dark. There's another one. It climbs as well, and I know a lot of people prefer climbers to crawlers, so that's a nice thing as well. And in my opinion, they are very humidity tolerant, and my gosh, they can take an underwatering. Trust me, they can take an underwatering. If you don't get around to watering this, it's going to hold fast for quite a long time. Oh, wow. There's a truck reversing, so if it gets real loud, that's why. Is he going to leave? He's staring at me. It's really, really awkward. You're gonna go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. Okay. So yes, anyway, great, 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 great plants. I'm just obsessed with them. They're not as easy to get anymore. And I think, quite honestly, that's just because they're so awesome. Everyone wants one. I honestly think that. Um, really, really good plants. I wouldn't say they propagate amazingly though. I will say that they root really slow for me, at least. I was actually supposed to be selling some of these in the big launch that I did. And a lot of you guys may have noticed that I had some choco listed. I mean, not this size, but I had some philodendron choco red listed. But I checked the roots before we were due to launch and they just, they weren't ready. They were still just, they just weren't good enough. So they were rooting for quite a long time. They were rooting for like three months. And it kind of amazed me that they weren't ready because in three months, usually you would have something good enough. Um, but they weren't, so, so they weren't ready, which leads me to believe they're slow to root, because I haven't really tried to propagate these, really. I have so many mother plants of these, I think I've got about 20, 25 mother plants, and I haven't been propagating, I've only just started to cut them, so I'm not finding that they're the easiest to propagate, which might also explain why people can't get hold of them as much. So, we'll pop him down though, he's beautiful. If you're looking for a good heart-shaped plant, that won't let you down. That's 100% one of them. Um, I do have a favorite heart shape that is not a climber, which probably is no surprise to people. Um, but as a climber, that one's really, really good. Love that one. It's really, really beautiful. I'll grab the other one that is not a climber. I'll grab my favorite crawler because honestly, you don't get a prize for guessing this one because it's just, it's like a staple plant of this shop. If I had to pick a plant that this shop grows the best, out of any other plant, it has to be Gloriosum. The amount of amazing Gloriosums this shop has given me is just amazing, which might contribute to why I love them so much. I don't know. But Gloriosum, for me at least, again, they were in my easy uh, rare houseplant video, but Gloriosum for me at least are very easy. I don't have a problem with them. I grow them like weeds, it's ridiculous. They're really, really good. This one, I think there's two different ones in here and this one's got some serious veinage. Can you see that? Let me just try and get that up to the screen. It's got some like extra awesome veinage. Look at that, lovely. Great, great plants. These are crawlers, so you're not gonna get the best growth pattern in the world. By that, I mean, I mean, I've cut from this before and it's, it's still rooting away. That's how good the shop is for its roots, but it grows kind of weird. It's not gonna grow upwards, so you can't put these up a totem pole of any kind. You've just got to kind of let them just do their thing. But they're great plants. They're velvety. They've got good contrast. They're lovely and soft. They're just nice plants. I find them really easy. I would be curious to see if anybody else does. I don't hear anybody particularly complaining about Gloriosum, but I don't know. 
Maybe it is just me. Maybe it's just the conditions here. But we have perfect conditions for these plants. This isn't the best Gloriosum that I have, by the way. Um, a lot of you may or may not know that I had a huge one that's just off to my left. It's massive. Like, the leaves are, like, this big. Um, I cannot... <laughs> I cannot pick that up and show you. Also, to be quite honest, the best specimens that I had are now on the living wall as well. Um, the ones that had like the biggest dinner platey leaves, they're all on the wall, so I can't really show you anything other than just one off the shelf. But they're amazing. I love them. I don't think I'll ever stop loving them because they're brilliant. We'll do this one next. It's not the biggest specimen in the world, but I think it's big enough to illustrate my point. So my next top 10 favorite philodendron is definitely this one. This is Philodendron Jose Bono, and the leaves I might go down my microphone, but the thing that is cool about this plant, if I just try and hold it back so you can see, it's quite a big one, I'm not gonna lie. Um, the cool thing about this plant is the leaves, when they get big, they go a little bit, I mean, they go much bigger than this, by the way, but they go into these long, big, fat paddle type shapes, so that's really cool, but it's not the coolest thing about this plant. You may notice the variegation on this plant, and I have covered this before, I think in my last, well, second to last video, but this plant is variegated, but it is variegated in the same way that a Thai constellation has variegation. So it's chaotic, but it's stable. Like it can't not be variegated. Does that make sense? You don't have to cut it like you would with Florida Beauty to maintain it. It's just gonna stay like this. The only thing I will say is this one's coming through really nice. It is, it's going quite green already. So the variegation will come through really cream and then it will fade down to a green. So if you look, these are like the newer variegated leaves here. If I show you, I mean, this is a good one here. I just grab that, shove my fingers into the lecker there. It's not, it doesn't stay really cream and strong. It does fade down. Not only that, but it, it's not always big sectoral chunks. You can get like these weird flex, I guess. It's very similar to a Thai constellation in that sense. Only a Thai constellation, if there's a nice big pretty cream bit, it's going to stay cream. Whereas this one, it'll fade down. Do not let that put you off. It's a fantastic plant and I do recommend them. I think they're easy to propagate. I've only taken a couple of propagations from this. I need to do more over the winter, but I've never had a, like, you know, a failed prop from it. So I guess that's a good start. Really, really nice plants. Again, this, this plant doesn't really showcase it. I got one from the Aroid show last year and it was amazing. And that's a better example, I would say, of what a Jose Pono would look like. But it's really, really beautiful. I love it. It is one of my favorites. This is the best one I could find on the shelf that wasn't going to attack me. Um, but really, really pretty plants. Right, I'm going to pull out another large plant and just get it out of the way because it's huge. So again, probably no surprise, but this is another classic plant for me, and that is the Philodendron Billeti. Also, it's absolutely huge. I've shown you one of these before, so you get the idea, but Billeti are fantastic plants. They climb really well. They take to Lekka very well. Um, no real problems there. They can handle it, probably because their aerial roots are so like big and just juicy. Like here's an aerial root right here. They're really, really big, solid roots, but they're just, they're, they're pretty easy. And because they've got a big, hefty root system, you don't get as much problems with them. In my experience, anyway, they propagate okay, too. I've got to say that they're not bad propagators. So for that reason, I quite like them. Now, this one is rather large. It needs tamed a little bit. If I do a quick head test right there. They're just great plants. The cool thing about Billetai really is the orange stems, which I hope come off orange on camera. Yeah, I think they do. And obviously the long sagittate leaves because they're really like big long arrows. I just love them. They're great. This one is probably too big to keep up here. I, I probably will just sell this one, but I think I may have some smalls left. I've kind of sold all the smalls because they seem to be the most popular ones. I'm going to put it down pretty quickly because there's not, I have covered this before, this plant, so I'm not going to spend ages on it, but it's a really, 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 really nice plant. So this plant, I'm not going to get the name of right. I need to go and Google what it actually is because I can't remember. I feel like it begins with H, but I don't know. That might just be a bad guess. But I have loved these plants for a long time. I have quite a few of them at the top of my shop at the back. But I know them to be, previously, Philodendron Montanum. And I will show you them now. It probably needs a clean, this one. This is the lowest hanging one that I could possibly pick up. Yeah, it needs a bit of a clean. But these plants are absolutely brilliant. Again, they could tolerate being underwater, no problem. They get really big paddly leaves quite easily as well. 
They're matte, which I love, and they have a really nice, you know, could we call it ribbing down the front? They're just really great plants. I don't know if I can show you them up close. Again, this plant is like super dusty on the front. It needs a bit of a clean. It hasn't been sprayed down yet since the move. If I just show you there how nice these plants are. I'd be interested to know if anybody else loves these as much as I do. Um, I just think they're amazing. There's quite a few on the wall, by the way. I think there is maybe four or five on the wall because I love them that much. One of my favorite plants. They do have very long petioles in comparison to the leaves, but honestly, oh my God, I love them. This is the smallest one I've got. Honestly, it's the smallest one I've got. Some of them are just huge. Again, I would love to have something like this up here. I don't think I can. I can't fill up all the space because I don't have surfaces to really put plants on. Obviously this plant here, for example, is too big for the back shelves. So I can only put certain things on there. So I need to be really, really careful about what I put up here. And sometimes I just need to admire from afar in the shop and I can't have everything up here, but we'll see, we'll see. This has been a favorite of mine for like about a year. I've had these in a long, long time and they haven't budged from my favorites. So really, really nice one. As I say, it's not Philodendron Montanum, but I think people were calling it that originally. So I will have put the name on the screen of what the actual plant is called um, because I cannot remember as of recording this video. Um, let's see if I can actually Google it like really quickly while I'm on camera, really, really quickly. Show me what it is. You know what it is? I can't find it. I can't find what it is, guys. Um, I'm gonna try when I get to editing, but if not, I know it's not supposed to be Montanum, but everyone on the internet is calling it Montanum right now. I'm sure it isn't though. I'm sure I'm not making that up. I don't know. Right, my last plant. I'm very excited about this. Uh, this, I bought this, when did I buy this? I don't know when I bought this. <laughs> I have more than one of them. I have a couple and they were bought into the shop as something else but it's evident that it's not what I bought it as. I can't remember what I bought it as, but I know it ain't that because I would know and I'd be looking for it. But this plant is super awesome and I don't know how many people know about this plant. I am not saying it's super rare. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is I don't think it's had press. I don't think people know about it. Or maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe it is rare. Not a clue. As I say, I've been looking for this for a long time and it came to me kind of unexpectedly as something else, so. So I have here, not the best specimen because obviously you import it, the roots aren't great. It takes some time to get back to its former glory. So the, the new growth is a little bit dwarfed, but this is, I believe it's very wonky is what it is. So it tells me it's got like no root at all, but this is, I think, Philodendron Snowdrift. You know what? I'm just gonna pull this out because I think it's gonna go really all over the place anyway. Oh, oh, oh. That's one hell of a long route. Okay, let's just pull it out the pot, full transparency, because I just have a feeling that if I pick that up wrong, it's going to fall out anyway. So yeah, welcome to imported roots, guys. This is this is a while after import as well. I think I imported this in earlier this year and it, it doesn't seem to have grown that much, which is a shame. But anyway, this I think is Philodendron Snowdrift or Philodendron X Snowdrift. Now then, these plants are awesome and I'm so happy to find these. So I'll take you on a quick tour of why this plant is awesome. So on the old leaves, I'll cover those first. They're not proper green. They're like a frosted green. They may look lime on camera. I don't know. I think they look a bit lime, but they're kind of frosted. It's not a full on green. And you may be able to see if I hold that up like so. It does have little green kind of flecks in it. Maybe there's a better leaf to show you. I guess that leaf's not bad there as well. You see that? Oh, come on. Maybe you can see, maybe you can't, but it has small little flecks of green that is kind of persistent on the plant. So the leaf will emerge one way and it will fade down to that. But when it emerges, they emerge white. And I'm loving that, right? Remember this is dwarf, so that's why it's dwarfed because there's no roots, but I'm just loving how these emerge. So. The cool thing about this plant is that the leaves emerge with a very frosted pinky kind of petiole. Admittedly, they do get a lot more pink than this one is, or at least according to Google, they do. And they emerge still with the odd green fleck in the leaf. And this is going to be really hard to show you. So I apologize because my, um, 
my ring light is just not going to allow you to see this. I don't think I'm going to move back just in case it's better back, but they emerge white and they have still the little green flecks on the leaf. And over time, they will, you know, they'll fade down, but they're also quite pinky and all the little veins down the leaf are pink as well. It's just such a pretty plant. It's like a, I mean, I would almost say that's peach right there. It's so, so nice. And this obviously takes me because it's kind of similar to a ghost in the way that leaves come out white and they fade down. I do have a little bit of an obsession with plants that do that. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. But yeah, I have a few of these. This is probably the larger one. There are a couple of small ones downstairs, but I'm kind of obsessed with them. And I wish I could remember what they were imported in as, because I can't, I don't know what they were, but really, really pretty plant. It's such a shame that that leaf is so tiny, but I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, well, that's why it's tiny then. So yeah, it doesn't look like much. I appreciate this, but there is an image on NSE, I believe I will pop it here that shows you just how actually awesome the plant is. And it is a better example than this one, but I still love this one. I'm really, really happy that that's what it is because I wasn't expecting it. I think I'm sure as heck that I covered this in my first ever philodendron rare plant index that I did. I can't be certain, but I think I did. And I was like super hyped for this and I loved it. I'm just pleased to have one. If you're interested in these, do let me know. Um, I will try and get some more and just get them going for spring. But I don't know, let's put him there because he's going to need repotted. Let's put him on the table actually, like so. So yeah, doesn't look like much, but I love it. And it's probably because it's white and it fades down because I love that on plants. It's just my favorite thing ever. I think I actually prefer that over variegation. And it's weird because a lot of my favorite plants aren't variegated. They really aren't. It's, it's not something that I really value very much in a plant. I prefer to have something like a Gloriosum over a lot of variegated stuff. I don't know why, I just like it. There's something just nice about having the plant, you know, that's the way it is and it's, it's not gonna revert on you. I don't know. Plus I think when you buy things like this, they're gonna keep their value because this isn't gonna change. This is what you get, a bit more of a classic. I don't know if it's just me, but my viewfinder looks real dark. Apart from me in the frame, it looks real dark. I'm very sorry. Yeah, it looks dark. It's, it's getting pretty dark outside. I'm annoyed that I had to wait to film this, to be honest, because I've been ready for a long time, but never mind. So that was this week's video. If there are any other videos you'd like to see me do, then let me know. I'm still having to do more of the easy videos at the minute because I'm still shipping out from the shop. I have a lot to do, but do let me know. I wanna do some more repot with me videos, only now they're probably gonna be a little bit different because they're probably gonna be done here. I'm probably gonna be propagating shop stuff, but I can still do a repot with me. It's just gonna be a little bit different. Maybe more of a propagate with me, we could say. Uh, I wanna do some of those. I want to do a more of an in-depth tour of the shop. I know I've mentioned this before, as soon as basically it's less hectic in here and we get everything tidied up again, I wanna do that. There's a few videos I'd like to do, but if you'd like to see anything in particular, then please let me know in the comments. And I guess that's it. I hope you're all doing okay. <laughs> I know it's a little bit of a trying time at the minute in the US, at least as of recording this video. Hope you're all doing okay. And I will see you next week. Bye guys.